There can be no doubt that just as the British put together serious assassination attempts against Hitler and other Nazi leaders, the Germans were not averse to doing the same against the Allies. One of the strangest incidents of World War II has been suggested as a possible German attempt to kill British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, though the real reason remains somewhat open to debate. It did result in the death of a Hollywood star and a host of characters straight out of a John le Carré novel. During World War II, several European nations stayed neutral, including Sweden, Switzerland, Spain and Portugal. The latter became a hotbed of espionage and intrigue in the capital, Lisbon. Incredibly, even though war raged across the continent, you could still travel by airliner from Britain to neutral nations. The British Overseas Airways Corporation, an ancestor of British Airways, was a state-owned airline founded in 1939. Flights were heavily restricted to diplomatic personnel, military attaches, VIPs, and those with special government permission. When the Netherlands was invaded in May 1940, airliners of the national carrier KLM were evacuated to Britain and were interned. However, after negotiations, the British used KLM aircraft to replace British aircraft on a scheduled BOAC service between Heston Aerodrome in England and Lisbon. Operations then moved to Whitchurch in Bristol. The service operated four times a week, and by June 1943, the KLM BOAC operation had made over 500 flights and carried 4,000 passengers. By November 1940, going back a bit, one Douglas DC-2 and three Douglas DC-3s operated the route. BOAC had repainted the Dutch aircraft in camouflage with civilian markings, and each had a Dutch bird name below the cockpit window. Lisbon Airport was a hotbed of illicit activities. Spies and escaped Allied prisoners of war used the Lisbon to Whitchurch air route. German agents watched the aircraft and passengers carefully, reporting to Berlin anything interesting. The airliners were considered neutral and were theoretically immune from attack. Both sides left airliners alone, mostly. However, the KLM planes transited across the Bay of Biscay off the west coast of France, scenes of constant air and naval activities between the Allies and the Germans. Before long, KLM aircraft were attacked. On the 15th of November 1942, DC-3 Ibis was machine-gunned by a Messerschmitt ME-110 fighter and was hit in the port wing, engine and fuselage, limping to Lisbon for repairs. On the 19th of April 1943, Ibis was attacked again, this time by six BF-110 fighters. The captain evaded the Germans in the clouds, but the aircraft was slightly damaged during the encounter. On the 1st of June 1943, the Ibis was at Lisbon Airport and assigned the flight number 777A. German intelligence knew that Winston Churchill had travelled to North Africa in May to meet with General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Agents were alerted to monitor all likely civilian airliners making flights back to the UK. Though Churchill had his own dedicated personal aircraft, which I've already done a video about, you can find the link in the description box below, he had used airliners on occasions, most recently in January 1942 when he had flown from Britain to Bermuda. Rumours were abroad that Churchill would fly home from Lisbon on an airliner. Rumours perhaps planted by MI6 to confuse the Germans to Churchill's actual travel itinerary. It has been speculated that from a distance, short, portly, cigar-smoking passenger Alfred Chennels looked like Churchill. He was travelling with his boss, the tall, thin Hollywood actor Leslie Howard, who may have been mistaken for Churchill's bodyguard, Detective Inspector You're Walter late. Thompson. I'm furious with you. Late? There. Is that all right? That's terrible. I, I've taken up with a thrifty spinster. <laughs> That's all you deserve. Well, where are they, Father and Owen? In the other room. Tell me, darling, did you really say you'd marry me? I'm afraid I did. Oh, heaven help us both. Just this one marriage, please. You know, I haven't been very good about marriage. I was exposed to a very bad case of it as a baby. We must make a grand go of it. 
Other passengers aboard the flight that day included Kenneth Stonehouse, the Washington, D.C. correspondent for Reuters News Agency, Terrell Shervington, director of Shell Mex and BP Oil in Lisbon, Wilfred Israel, a prominent Anglo-German Jewish activist, in total 13 passengers and four KLM crew. Actor Leslie Howard, himself Jewish, had been in Spain and Portugal promoting the British war effort, famous for films like Gone with the Wind and the Scarlet Pimpernel, he was vocally anti-Nazi. Shervington was also an agent for Special Operations Executive, SOE, for its Iberian operations. Wilfred Israel had been instrumental in setting up the Kinder Transport that saved more than 10,000 Jewish children from Germany and Austria in the late 1930s. Flight 777A departed five minutes late at 7.35 a.m. German pilots claimed long after the war that Flight 777A was not deliberately targeted. At 10 hundred hours local time, eight Junkers Ju-88 aircraft took off from Bordeaux. The aircraft from Kampfgeschwader 40 were escorting two U-boats through the Bay of Biscay. The pilots claimed that they were unaware of the airliner route from Whitchurch to Lisbon, which seems unlikely. Bad weather meant they couldn't locate the U-boats and decided instead on a general search of the area. Bumping into a large aircraft, they identified by shape as Allied, claiming they could see no markings. At 10.54, the DC-3's wireless operator, Van Brugge, radioed that they were being followed and were fired upon by enemy aircraft, giving his position as 200 miles or 320 kilometers northwest of the Spanish coast. According to the Germans, two Ju-88s attacked the DC-3, setting fire to its port wing and engine. The German flight leader caught up with the other Ju-88s in tow and identified the enemy aircraft as civilian. He ordered the attack called off. The Germans observed three people jump from the plane, but no parachutes opened as the people were on fire. The DC-3 then hit the sea and sank moments later. Regardless of the German pilots' denials, rumours have abounded since 1943 that the Ju-88s were sent to intercept and shoot the plane down, as the Germans thought that Churchill was aboard. Churchill actually came home via Gibraltar on the 4th of June 1943 in a specially converted B-24 Liberator bomber. One suggestion made by historians was that British intelligence had uncovered the German plot through Enigma code decrypts, but Churchill let the flight go ahead so as not to compromise the secret of ultra-intelligence derived from German signals sent by Enigma machines. The flight path of the DC-3 and Churchill's aircraft were very similar. Could the Germans have confused the two flights and attacked the wrong one? At the time, British intelligence suspected the attack was aimed at killing actor Leslie Howard, who was a very vocal mouthpiece for the British war effort travelling to several neutral countries to generate support. Howard was also suspected to be a British intelligence agent, using his tours as covert intelligence-gathering missions. His death was certainly a shock to the British public. It has even been suggested that Howard had been in Spain at Churchill's request to persuade General Franco to stay out of the war, then travelled back via Lisbon. His movements, already tracked by German military intelligence, and a trap set to kill him. Again, Churchill may have known about the attack in advance, but let it proceed to protect the secret of Enigma-derived intelligence. No bodies were ever recovered from the wreck. The mystery of Flight 777A rumbles on, unresolved, but still full of intrigue. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.